<laughs> Monica Lockett with What's Cooking is up next. Uh, hello, my name is Monica Lockett, CEO of What's Cooking. And the first thing I wanted to address is this thing I'm sure everybody has experienced, and that's called pizza overload. How many people have went on Google.com looking for a delivery driver, and the only thing that is offered for delivery in your area is pizza? I want you guys to repeat after me. Ain't nobody got time for that. So here's the problem. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of eating pizza. Pizza in Chinese is the only thing that is available in wings. Wings. Now people say, well, why don't you use Grubhub? Well, okay, Grubhub is available in my area, but they only have Chinese pizza and wings. <laughs> and on top of that, if I try to use Uber Eats, uh, let's say Favor, not available in my area. I live in Garland. It's not there. So these, this, this became a problem, and not only that, but these, thing, these people are not really focused on residential areas. I'm only focused on like downtown, kind of like really uh, populated areas, New York, high city volume, like small places like me. So I said as I was driving home, what, if, what would it be like to be able to get my favorite dish, which is called elote? They got the best elote at Fuel City in, over here. What if I could get that delivered, okay? This is what I'm talking about. This is what we're trying to do. This is what we're trying to offer. Now, last year, Grubhub, selling pizza in my area, only they made a billion dollars in delivery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, that was, yeah, okay. <laughs> now, the average individual uh, spends over 900. I probably spend a little more than that a year. <laughs> Yes, on pizza. That's why I, was, I look like that lady on that uh, script. <laughs> so what's cooking? We, uh, we're trying to solve the problem of having more, more different variety, okay? So we wanted to offer different uh, ways to get delivery of food. What about food trucks? Imagine we're solving the problem by being able to offer food trucks, okay? Food trucks, personal chefs, being able to offer delivery from these people, okay? Uh, what about churches? I mean, things like that. People are, people are making food all over the place and, would, and have uh, all types of food, but we have no access to them. Um, also, Greasy Spoons restaurants. Think about your favorite restaurant and being able to get that delivered to you. That is the problem that we're solving. Right now, we have a um, desktop app that we're in the process of developing. Um, what uh, we're doing is <clears throat> the cook can add a dish to their uh, profile, create a menu for uh, people to like go and see. A user can search for what's cooking in their area. Then they could choose from a variety of options using the What's Cooking, cooking app. We have a mobile app that we're developing as well as, well as a desktop app. <clears throat> delivery is a hot commodity. Our target market is, I mean, who here does not get delivery? Does anybody not got anything delivered? You, oh, okay, well, you're the only one in the world. <laughs> Um, our revenue and user growth, uh, by the first month we plan on uh, starting off small, getting uh, just a lot of uh, food trucks and everything like that. Uh, by month two, we want to like move to the chef arena, um, restaurants, and as the time goes on, we're, we're starting in the DFW area, but we want to eventually by month seven be able to go to different areas, move to Austin, Houston, and other uh, areas, Detroit, the world, the Mars. <laughs> Our business model is a subscription. Uh, uh, we uh, sub have a subscription-based model as well as a commission-based. So um, as people, as uh, the cooks make money, we make money. Uh, advertisements, uh, we might have partners like World, uh, what's it called, Whole Foods, Kroger, so that uh, our cooks can get coupons from them. Subscription, um, if you want to eat some chicken from a, cer a certain personal chef, we want to have that available every Friday that you can actually go to our app and you can order that chicken every Friday and have it delivered like clockwork. Our average revenue per transaction is uh, $30.42. Uh, we plan on a 10% growth per week in the beginning. Uh, we're, you know, this is, this, could, you know, this is give or take. We have wiggle room in that. And our um, total addressable market value in web-based delivery is $9 billion with all the different web uh, delivery companies out there. We're also proud to announce 
that um, we have partnerships with Postmates, who delivers food in select areas in the U.S., as well as Roadie, who can deliver any food to any location throughout the U.S. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I was afraid of the gong, so, but I was done, so <laughs> thank you very much. That was good. Okay, great presentation, um, and I'm over here. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned that one of the um, pain points for you is that um, like Grubhub and, and Uber Eats and things don't deliver where you are. Well, I live downtown, so they do, but my pain point is um, I'm a single parent and I have a two-year-old, so what are your delivery times? So let's say 10.30, I need Fruit Loops and a gallon of milk and some other various things. Can you do that for me? Yes, we will be able to do that okay. for you. Uh, especially uh, through our roadie partner. They deliver anytime, anywhere throughout the U.S. Uh, Amazon uh, just announced today a trial uh, for Amazon food delivery in Atlanta for free to any Amazon Prime member. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to compete with that? Probably. Well, you know, our market will be different because we have every, a different group of, of we, we're not really mostly only focused on delivery, but also the food that we have available and the things that we have available. So it's not only just delivery, but when you go on our app, you're going to see variety and not just, okay, just, you know, a lot of these apps will offer free, but then they offer, okay, a list of specific things that you can order from as well. So that actually kind of goes in line with, with my problem. It's Amazon Prime. I am an Amazon Prime member, but um, I didn't get my order in quick enough for that 8 to 10 or something. So... I mean, you could deliver after. Yes, we will. Hi, neat idea. I was just thinking when he mentioned Amazon, I saw an email. Google is starting something like Google Express, I think they called it. Yes. And they're doing a six-month free trial. Yeah. And they're doing it in our area. They're partnering with Whole Foods. Not a lot of restaurants, so only part of your business, but... They're competition for you. Yes, I mean, we have a lot of competition as far as like Uber Eats, things like that. But the thing that we plan on doing is offering things like food trucks, church, you know, I mean, uh, personal chefs, subscription based, or you can actually order. So we're not just only focusing on just get, uh, restaurants or delivering food. We're, off, we're about the small business. We're about building business in a certain area. So if you have a restaurant, Slabs might not be able to uh, be on the, the Google app because Google's too big to know what's the, what's the best small restaurant in your area. We want to find out who, who does that greasy spoon in your area that you eat from all the time and, okay, tell us about that. We're going to get them on our app and you can deliver from us. That's going to be the difference between the big dogs and this app because we're focused on the small guys. Yeah, so you kind of answered a little bit of my question over here. Over here. Okay. Um, but I think, you know, you're talking about grocery delivery, but I think what's more interesting about what you discussed is things like church cookouts or small restaurants, things that are more available in sub suburban areas. Things like Grubhub, Uber Eats, they're pretty expensive. And I think, can you talk more about the price point that you would be offering that could be potentially different? From well, we don't Grubhub? charge our people to, to use our app. That's number one. The reason why Grubhub has a premium is because they charge the restaurants on top of it. So it makes the delivery higher. We don't charge that. So therefore, it makes, the, it makes everything a lot cheaper uh, in the long run. And we're really focused on building small businesses in the area. We're not, we're not trying to cut them out. A lot of the businesses that we're going to be targeting cannot be on Grubhub because Grubhub costs too much to them. I think you have a really great idea. And of course, there's legal aspects in almost every great idea. Unfortunately, we live in USA. Mm -hmm. And I know there's, and I think the wonderful thing is about the specialty cooks, because I've always lived around people that love to cook, so it's a good match because I love to eat. And I also know there, I have friends that are like gluten, have to have Free, gluten, exactly. yeah, or uh, you know, low fat or vegan or whatever. So there's all kinds of these people that can cook these specialty foods, and they don't necessarily want to be a restaurant because there's a lot of overhead in creating a restaurant. I mean, my husband wanted to have a restaurant and I just said no, you know? Initially, that was what the, this app was. It was for specifically cooks, but we realized the legal aspects of it. 
Right, so on your cooks, are you going to vet them to make sure that their kitchens are whatever certification it is? Yes, we are. We okay, so you will vet them. Yes. Okay, that's awesome. That's all I need to know. Two questions. Are you currently operational? We are actually in the pro we're in our last stages of development. We are trying to launch in July. We are looking for partners. We're looking for strategic partners. We're looking for developers. We're looking for people that will help us. Right now, we have a team in India that's helping us develop our app. We need some people in Dallas. We need people that will help us to make this uh, the development happen faster because a lot of the times things are being held up because of that development aspect. So if anybody that has any like help with that, we would definitely the second question is, you talk a lot about the greasy spoons, the best thing in your local area. How do you scale that to nine billion? I like it when it ends on the question and it just goes unanswered and you're like, 